Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Today it's going to be about buttons. Or more exactly, I want to use many of these buttons with one of these small microcontrollers. So a typical way of doing that will be to use uh, one input on the microcontroller for each switch you have. You'll put 5 volts, for example, in this case, into each switch. When you press the switch, you'll put 5 volts into the microcontroller. On the and you can read the digital input state of the pin, and you will know that the button has been pressed. You can make interrupts with this as well, and uh, it's all fine. But if I want to use, let's say, 15 buttons on one of these, I would already have run out of pins. So we will need to find another way to do that. And by the way, these are just uh, pull-down resistors, so that when uh, the button is not pressed, this will not just be flowing around in the space and thinking that everything is happening, when nothing is happening. And we have a small um, debounce capacitor as well, just because it's easier to do in, in hardware than to do it in software, I think. But you can actually do it in, in the software as well. So this is what I came up with. And uh, I don't think it's the first time anyone has come up with this idea, but uh, I just want to use the ADC to read a voltage. So the way this works is we still have 5 volts across all the switches on one, uh, one side of the switches here. And when you press the switch, you'll send 5 volts through one of these resistors. These are all different values. And this one is a 20k value resistor. So by selecting a different value for these, this will act like a voltage divider and it will make a different voltage on the pin of the microcontroller when you press different buttons. And uh, this will also act as a pull-down resistor. And uh, we have the capacity here as well. If we just uh, forget about this section for a moment, you can see that we have uh, only used one pin at the microcontroller. Uh, there's a little problem with this that we will take a look at later. Now, uh, what this is, is a comparator. So if we say switch 1 over here has the lowest voltage when it's pressed, we choose this uh, reference for the comparator to be just a little under this. So no matter which button we press, this comparator will make the output high. And we can use this as an interrupt to read the ADC. So you can say this, uh, we will need two pins, but but uh, you can actually do it with one pin if you just tell the code to read the ADC every time it runs through. So I built this up on the breadboard here and as you can see there's not much to it really. Uh, I didn't include the comparator because it's not really needed for this experiment. Uh, we have the microcontroller of course and we have the, the 10 different value resistors, resistors here. I did only put 10 in here because it's just a test anyway. We have a, this will be our resistor to ground that we will put one of these in series with and we will tab out the voltage in the middle. And to check that we actually get the value that we want, I just put for a little easier to display what switch we pressed. That's just uh, for resistors for the LEDs, and we have just a, just a small capacitor here to make it all fine. So at the moment, there's nothing connected to to this wire, so no pre no switch is pressed. I didn't put any switches on here because I thought it was easy just to use a wire. But if we press switch number zero, we should see the LEDs go up like that. And if we move this wire, now we will be pressing switch number one. And this shows up in, in binary. And switch number two. And nine. So that would be 
zero for root nine, and uh, as you can see, it works pretty fine. There's of course one uh, problem with this that if you press two buttons yes, with the higher value resistors on them, it will think that you actually pressed one of these switches with the lower value because when pressing two switches, you'll put these two in parallel, and the resistance will decrease, of course. And if it just ha so happens that you have uh, one of these matching with two of these, you'll think that you press that button. And then just to demonstrate that, if we uh, say uh, this is our switch here, we press switch number one, and we press switch number two as well. Warp, and you can see we get a five on the display <laughs> lights over there. So that's not the best thing, but of course you don't want to press two buttons at the same time. So this scene is showing the uh, values of the different resistors I used. And then will be the zero switch. So since this is in fact a voltage divider, we know that the resistor to ground is 20k, and we know this resistor is 1k. So we can calculate the voltage the input voltage is 5 volt, and we'll get 4.7 volts between these two resistors, 20k and 1k. And uh, we can use this voltage to find the ADC value that we will get for this switch. Since this is a 10-bit ADC, the max value will be 1023. And uh, we take that, we divide that by 5 volts, which will be our maximum, and uh, we multiply it by 4.7, that will be the voltage for this action switch, and we will get this value, or thereabout, because there is of course a tolerance in the resistance. And there's so I did just the same for the rest of the resistors, and uh, let's uh, take a look at the code and see what's going on. So to do this, we will have to set our data direction for the uh, switch input, the ADC, to be an input. And uh, I just set the whole port to input because I don't use any other pin. We will need the uh, LEDs to be outputs, of course. And we will need to uh, select the analog pin that we want to use. And I just set uh, both ports to the output state of both ports to be zero. Uh, just so we can start from there. And, uh, we just set up the ADC and uh, make us an integer. And we uh, start the ADC, wait for the uh, conversion to be completed, and this is the most important stuff. If we take a look at A, We'll have to combine two registers in the microcontroller to get the ADC value. And it checks if that value is less than 400. This will mean that no button has been pressed. And, uh, if it is not less than 400, it means a button has been pressed. And it will just uh, go through the values here that we calculated before to see when we hit a value that is where A is less than this value, and it means that that number has been pressed. And to find the value we need to put in here, we'll take a look at this other seed again here. We can see that our lowest value will be 585. So in fact, if the value is lower than 585, it means that no button has been pressed. I just uh, put 400 there, but if it is less than this, no button has been pressed. We want to find out if if we want to find out if button one has been pressed, we will need to write a value that is higher the, than this, but lower than this. So I just took a value in between. And for the next button we will take a value in between 640 and 680, so I just picked 660. And so on. So to take away the risk that somebody could actually press two buttons and uh, the result will be 
one of the other buttons. You can uh, make this value here to have to be in between two numbers instead of just less than one number. But then you'll have to calculate all the values between if you press two buttons you'll have to calculate that value and make sure that value will not be the same as a single button. And it gets all complicated so I didn't really bother to do that because unless you press two buttons at the same time it it doesn't matter thing really. So I hope this was useful for you in some way and uh, well you may already know about it uh, and if you want to use any of these uh, schematics or the code for the microcontroller or anything you can find that on my website. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up. And you can always uh, subscribe to my channel if you want that but yeah. see ya.